Hello again. We want to welcome you to another one of the Ohio Ram shows. Just by way of telling who we are, Ohio Ram is a show that um, is related to Ohio Ram. We're a very loosely knit organization of persons who uh, support the race across America through two, uh, two uh, time stations here in southwestern Ohio, Time Station 41 in Oxford and Time Station 42 in Blanchester, Ohio. And this uh, broadcast is just one of our little extra efforts to try to increase interest and awareness of the race across America, the world's toughest bicycle race. My name is Lee Kreider. I'm the host of this show. Uh, I've been doing it for a little over a year now. And we're going to talk a little bit about the show toward the end. But we have as our guest today a uh, very special guest. I call him a friend. I don't see him very often, even though we only live about 12 miles apart. But John Foote up here in Troy, Ohio, uh, and the owner-operator, I call him, of Ultra Race News. John, how are you today? Very good, Lee. Thanks for having me on. Well, it's always a great thing to have you on and talk about what you're doing, because I'm quite impressed. But before we get into that, um, Tell me a little bit about your own cycling background, uh, how you came to be interested in ultra racing and what your involvement in it has been. Well, I guess my cycling background goes way, way back um, um, when I was 30 years old, which was, geez, 25, 26 years ago, is actually when I started riding. And I just started riding with a friend who invited me out one day. I bought a bike, went for a ride. Um, all along about the same time, there was a, a race that I saw on television, the Great American Bike Race, and later Race Across America, and I caught both of those races um, on Wide World of Sports. Um, I think they, uh, they actually showed the race several years in a row back then. But that really got the juices flowing and uh, motivated me to ride farther and farther and farther. Uh, along about, about the same time, um, triathlons came into vogue. Um, the first Ironman was televised as, as well, and I'm like, well, I, you know, that looks like a lot more fun than just riding a bike. I think I'm going to try that. But uh, I quickly learned that running really wasn't my thing, and um, I could swim, probably swim well enough to survive, but I just couldn't do laps or anything like that. So I, I kind of settled into the bike. Um, before I knew it, I was doing century rides. Um, that wasn't quite enough, and I found the ultra world and started doing ultras uh, in 85, 86. Um, there was a race around uh, Columbus, uh, Bicycle Marathon of Columbus was mm -hmm. one. Um, of course, the National 24-Hour Challenge um, up in Michigan was one. The Wolverine 200 up on Bell Island did that several times. Um, but my riding was pretty much limited to right here in the Ohio area. Um, at the time, there were only two Ram qualifiers, one out on the West Coast and one up, up in Illinois. So you only had two chances a year to qualify for Ram, which is a lot, a lot different than it is now. So I, I did a lot of those events, and um, even before going into to cycling, I had had a, a back problems. So I had a... Um, actually had a disc surgery when I was 23 years old. So I was seven years post-surgery, got into cycling, and it wasn't long before I ran into another surgery. And um, But I never let that, that really bother me. And by, I think, 1986, I did my first 500-plus mile race, which was um, Bicycle Cross Missouri, or BAM is what mm -hmm. they called it. Remember that? And that was uh, 549 miles from St. Louis to Kansas City and back. And it was up and down um, into the valley, in and out of the river valley in Missouri, Missouri River. And uh, it's quite challenging, a lot of climbing. Don't know exactly how, what the climbing um, numbers were on it, but man, it beat me up pretty good. And I, uh, I ended up doing quite well. I think I finished like seventh or eighth, something like that. Um, but then again, I injured my back again, 
and I think that was probably my third surgery on my back at that time. So at that point, I, I had pretty much given up um, and I actually took almost 20 years off the bike. And just, it was hard to let it go, um, but I just let the whole thing go completely until I found Matt Bond running a time station in Troy, Ohio uh, <laughs> uh, for RAM. And that's been several years ago, but that really got the juices flowing again. Um, uh, found a recumbent bike which I didn't even know they existed at the time. Um, met a guy named Larry Graham from over in Columbus who now runs Calvin's Challenge. And uh, he turned me on the uh, Bachetta Recumbents. And uh, first time I saw it, I said, I've got to have one of those. <laughs> um, but before that, Cindy and I, my wife Cindy and I, we bought a, a tandem recumbent just to try it out. And sure enough, I could ride. I could ride pretty much pain-free, and she enjoyed it as well. So I moved on to the Bachetta, picked that up, and um, within six months uh, of picking that up, I was down qualified for Ram down at Sebring. And, uh, and then it was on to uh, Furnace Creek in 2007, the 508. And, of course, uh, the back problems reared their heads reared its head one more time and, and that was pretty much it for me. I was about a hundred yards from the top of town's pass and I couldn't go on. Um, laid in the back of the, the van, bawled my eyes out and we headed home. I DNF'd and, uh, and that was about it. So I had to find something else to do to stay active in the sport because I really love it. Yeah, well, John, I believe I first met you uh, and uh, as I was looking back, I think that was about 2003 that the time station first moved into the Troy area. That's was right. It not? Yeah, that was right. And I think that's where I first met you and Cindy uh, working there. Uh, Matt uh, twisted my arm, and uh, at the time my wife was working the night shift, and so I said, oh, heck, you know, uh, since she's working the night shift, I will too. And, and that became my thing uh, at... Uh, there, uh, Troy, for what was it, five or six years we were there. Yeah, I believe so. We moved the location a couple of times, or at least once, and the yeah. route changed a couple of times. And Well, I'll tell you, uh, no disrespect to uh, where we're at now, but I still consider that time station there on the grounds of that hotel the best situation I ever had for a time station. We. You know, we had food, we had everything we needed, uh, we had rooms in the hotel. Uh, that was just great, and uh, we. Uh, I guess I understand why uh, Ram moved her out, but I, I I grieved a bit when we moved it away from Troy. Of course, it was a lot closer to me than it is now. Yeah, there were some difficulties with that location, the left-hand turn coming out of there, and uh, traffic was starting to build and get a little bit busy with the industry there, but uh, I agree, I really liked it. And I was pretty heartbroken when it moved off. I got to tell you that. Um, yeah. And we, yeah, we really enjoyed it. We got great cooperation from the hotel there. They did. Uh, they offered their laundry services for all the riders and the crews and the hotel rooms and showers and and the, and the whole deal. So yeah, it was it was really good. So, John, I then became aware. I don't know how I first became aware of your work with on the internet, but it seems to me like the, I first noticed what you were doing with your pictures. Is that kind of what came first, as I recall? That's exactly right. After um, after the big DNF at 508 and the broken heart, I, you know, I've been, I've been pushing off the, the point of trying to retire from 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 racing and riding longer distance as long as I could, and it was it really come to a head, and I had to find a way to come active or stay active in the sport. Um, so what I ended up doing, I've always been interested in photography. I've never been formally trained, but I was interested enough to uh, to buy some equipment. And what I did actually was I, I sold my racing bike, my carbon fiber racing bike, to finance some camera equi equipment and started heading out to some of the races. I uh, went up to Iowa to the Ultra Midwest 24, took some photos up there, did some photos at Calvin's. I've, 
I've taken photos at Calvin's, I think five years in a row now. But that's kind of where I had it at first. And after I got in that, I, I got to realize that, you know, the sport of ultra cycling, there really is no media coverage. I mean, uh, none whatsoever. The UMCA does does a magazine, a quarterly magazine that, that features articles about some of the races, but no one really does any news reporting day to day, event by event, and and I felt you know that's a real disservice to the sport and it's a disservice to um, the athletes that put in the mega miles and and just pretty much put their life aside. To compete in this sport, they spend every dollar you know that they have doing it as well. And I'm like, we got to find a way, you know, to cover this thing and and promote a little bit more, and you know, show that we're a little bit more active and maybe recruit some new people into the sport, new athletes into the sport, and uh, you know, just get out and promote it a little bit. So that's what I started. Um, I just got a, a free WordPress blog and started writing. Started writing some race reports from um, information that I got from some of the race directors and some of the athletes, some of the riders who were racing. And uh, it kind of took off from there. I did that for about a year. And that was in 2011. And then uh, 2012, um, I decided to go uh, whole hog, at least whole hog for me. I've never really developed anything on a computer or a site or anything like that, but I wanted to turn it into a magazine um, format uh, for news and, and uh, race reports and stories. So that's what I did. I, I went and um, um, I put together a website, uh, found a host, and uh, away, we went. away we went. And it's now 2013. We've had uh, over a hundred thousand visitors to the site um, from one, over 130, 135 countries. Um, we've got pretty much 300 or so uh, stories and posts on the website at this point, and um, it's really doing well. Well, I've put the, up on the screen. You see it in your uh, thumbnail at the bottom, but I'm broadcasting your. Uh, uh, web address ultraracenews.com and I've been pushing that every every show because I I try to read everything that goes up there I, I subscribe For some reason I get it twice I don't know why but uh, uh, but I read everything that's up there and the one thing I like about it John uh, what you've done and you brought some new people on we'll take we'll talk about that um, what it's not just you know how many miles and time and you know, it rains or something like that. But you you get these people to tell about what they were experiencing and you know what they were feeling and and what they struggled with and what went right and what went wrong. And you really you read these articles and I don't know how in the world you get around these people up, but I just really enjoy it so uh, so very much. Um, I think was it today uh, you put up an article by Janet Christensen I think did you not was it today it went up yeah we did we put one up by uh, Janet Christensen um, about uh, uh, Shanna Hogan yeah Shanna Hogan she put up a, a, a nice little article on Shanna this this uh, this morning um, but you're right about the race reports and the descriptions I mean there are no better writers um, than the people who witness the race from the, the eyes of the racer themselves. I mean, it is just some of the, some of the stuff that they they go through is just really gripping. And the more I got into this, um, the more I discovered that they are the real asset of the site. They are the storytellers. I mean, I cannot write a story like that um, any better than what they can present it themselves. And once I realized that, I started reaching out to these uh, these people at the races, the athletes at the races. I find out, I get the results as quick as I can. I find out who won, who came in close behind, um, who may have struggled through but finished, and I contact them basically through social media. 
I mean, social media came to vogue about the same time I was getting started with this. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's been quite an asset. It's unbelievable. Um, and I try to get things up as quickly as I can. I, I try to get the viewpoint, a viewpoint from the race directors, and I try to get uh, um, the viewpoint of the event through the eyes of, of the racers themselves. And it just doesn't get any better than that. But um, just a step back, yeah, I've got Janet Christensen. Janet um, has volunteered to to come on board just this year to handle a lot of the West Coast events. There are tons and tons and tons of West Coast events. They've got a double century schedule that's just out of this world. Um, and then uh, that keeps her quite busy. And I do uh, pretty much everything else is the best I can. Um, also, I have Jim Finger, who started out. He was one of the first writers that came on board. He still contributes now and then. I've got Kelly Moylan. Moylan and Jim Verhuel, they both write um, on training and coaching, two great assets and, and when it comes to training, coaching. Um, and then Steve Bourne, of course, with um, uh, nutrition. I've also added Mike Schultz. I don't want to forget Mike's, Mike's uh, uh, input. He puts together an article every month also on training and, and coaching, and uh, he's been a great, great asset as well. But Janet has... A great background. She's been through RAM several times. Uh, she's a RAM finisher. She's crewing uh, this year for Cassie Schumacher. Right. And uh, I can't wait to, to see what she brings back from that trip. And I'm going to try to bring bring back a story from my trip. So, um, yeah, it's not something that you can do alone. And I quickly realized that. And, and I mean, I knew that going in. And um, I'm always looking for help. I'm always looking for contributors. So the more the more contributors, the better product. Well, I, as I've said so many times, if you're interested in, in ultra cycling in any way, shape, or form, this is the place to go because uh, it, if it's happening, it seems like John has it on there. And I don't want to get away from your photography, John, though, because <laughs> I, I, I just I, I do a little photography myself. And I, I look at some of your stuff, and I just say, how did he do that? And how, you know, could there's one photograph, and I was trying to find it today on your site, and I, I didn't. I think you may know the one I'm talking about, um, that I, I think it's just quintessential race across America. It's the photograph, and I don't remember who the racer was, where he's out in the desert and climbing, and, and a team member is spritzing water on him. Yeah, that was uh, that was in Ram 2009, and what I didn't really touch on is um, after I got the camera gear, which once I gave up my ultra cycling basically and bought the camera gear, um, Cindy and I said, my wife Cindy and I said, let's go on Ram. I'm like, okay, let's do it. We've got um, a family out in Orange County, California. We've got a nice base out there to start with, start to race. We can stay there, so we went out. And we actually, in 2009, we trailed the race back and uh, pretty much at our own pace, uh, leapfrogged in front of the racers and um, had, a, had an awesome time. We turned around and did it again in 2010, 2010 excuse me. But that photo was actually a, a photo of Tony O'Keefe from um, Canada, and that was uh, Ram 2009. And there was actually another um, Ram photographer there who who actually did see the shot coming too, and I do have a couple more shots that aren't that don't have Tony cropped out, but do have the Ram photographer running up uh, beside him, pointing his aiming his camera at him, which is another great shot that I never really posted. But I think I probably got out of I don't know 1,500 shots on that trip, maybe uh, three or four exceptional ones like that. So. Uh, those are the ones that I want to print off and hang on the wall for sure. Yeah, that's that. So one, there's a that, lot of luck involved in that. Topic. Oh yeah, I know that. But you know, I, I look at the picture and I says it tells the story. It tells the story about the racer struggling up the hill in the heat. It tells the story about the crew member. It tells the story about the uh, follow vehicle. It, it kind of just grabs the whole thing there and, and tells a lot about the about the race. And uh, I, I just I. Like I said, I was trying to look through your site today, and I 
I well, I kind of run out of time. I didn't have time to really do it, but that that's that's great stuff. Yeah, that's I had a good stuff. one of uh, I had a good one of Marco Bello, um, uh, rolling down a hill. I, I uh, slowed the shutter speed down some, so I got some pretty good blur on his uh, yeah. bike and the background and all that, while I was still able to to actually focus on him a bit. That was a good one, and I had another one of. Uh, I think uh, it was a French a French writer that year, and I can't remember who he, who he was, but he was just he was uh, riding through a driving rain in, in Colorado, and I just kept uh, leapfrogging and hiding in the bushes, and uh, and I got a great shot out of him too. He he saw me and put his thumbs up and smiled at me, and uh, a lot of fun on those trips. I want to do that yeah, again too. Yeah. Um, well, I understand you're doing something a little different this year. You're going to be crewing. Yeah, I am. Uh, this, is gonna, I'm a, this is my rookie attempt at crewing. I hope I, I can uh, do my uh, team some good. I'm crewing for Rick Schultz and Dave Preston on uh, Team ONABB. Um, they did real well last year, and uh, we're hoping to do really well again this year and maybe, maybe uh, well, at least win the two-man uh, two competition, and uh, who knows, maybe more. But uh, yeah, we have a good team. It's 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 going to be a first for me. We got a large team, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. What well, what kind of a role are you going to have on the team, John? Um, we, we really haven't nailed that down yet. I think everyone's really going to pitch in everywhere. Uh, everything's pretty much going to be um, divided evenly. Um, but. I'm taking the camera, girl, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, we hope we see a picture or two. I would, I'd hope so. Uh, and what's Sydney going to be doing while you're doing this? <clears throat> well, she'll probably be laying out by the pool. <laughs> no, I'll be, she's going to miss it because she really enjoys uh, uh, making the trip. We've driven out and back to California probably more than I can count on two hands. And um, last year we were out there and uh, photographed. Um, Route 66 out through Arizona. Oh, that would have been uh, but, interesting. Uh, that, that looks. Yeah, like. I have some photos that I haven't even put up on that yet. But uh, she's going to mess it this year. But uh, hopefully, she can come out and, and uh, do it again soon. Well, on uh, covering these uh, various races, are you traveling much to do this, or are you mostly getting people to feed you? Oh, most of the events that I'm um, that I'm covering now, I'm not traveling. Um, it's just uh, too much of a financial burden right now to get out and do that. Uh, if I ever get to the point where the site makes some money, that might be an option. Um, but it's just, it's you know, the money that I make on the on the site now through advertising and whatnot pretty much covers the cost. Um, I've been able to do, like I said, uh, uh, Ultra Midwest up in uh, Iowa. Uh, down, been down to Sebring. Uh, which was fun, and then last year I went and did uh, uh, something a little dif different. It was the Dirty Kansas, Dirty Kansas 200 out in Kansas, which is uh, actually a 200 mile gravel road race. Which I, uh, I had never heard of that one before. I just read it. You just had an article a few days ago about it. Uh, which, yeah. Uh, See, I want to make a point and include some of those races uh, on the site as well. I think there's some really good. Material and those can really you can go. I mean, any either either right either way you go with that. Um, I think you're going to get a good endurance race. But that I saw, I, I didn't know anything about that till about a year ago. And I'm like, I've got to get out there and, <laughs> and see that for myself. And uh, and there's some really good uh, videos online too about that race. So that was very interesting. I went out and did that. Well, you you do a great job. John and and I really didn't know all that much uh, was going on in ultra racing until I started reading your site and it started with a little bit of a blog and it just kept growing and growing and growing and uh, so I've enjoy, enjoyed it quite a lot and like you said you've got things on there about nutrition about uh, equipment about training and other things and that's uh, all greatly appreciated. But you know, there's one thing else, one other thing I know about you, John, that I'd like to have you talk about, quite aside from cycling, and that is your uh, uh, your dogs. What you've been doing with dogs? Yeah. Well, we uh, we're involved with a Greyhound rescue group out of uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, and um, we've been rescuing greyhounds for. 
Oh man, long time. Uh, probably about 15 years ago is when I first I got my first one. Uh, we love the breed. It's a great cause. Um, what we do not do, we, we do not allow ourselves to foster these dogs because we know we would fail at fostering. We'd end up with a whole house full. We're yeah. down to one right now. At one point, we had uh, we had five dogs in the house, <laughs> um, but they're great dogs, and um, yeah, we we love the breed and, uh, and we really support uh, greyhound adoption. These are all retired greyhounds. They come from tracks in uh, Florida, Alabama and uh, West Virginia, um, and sometimes other points throughout the United States where, where tracks close, um, we'll bring dogs in and, and find homes for those as well. Well, that's a wonderful thing. I, I, I love dogs myself, and John, as another aside, I've kind of taken up as a new hobby of my own is photographing dogs, and this started uh, two years ago. Uh, three years ago, I guess now, uh, we went to the Outer Banks uh, for many years and had a place right on the beach we rented there. And one year I was driving down there and I was thinking, uh, you're probably saying, why would a guy going to the Outer Banks would have a thought like this? Says, what on earth am I going to photograph this year? I've shot everything there is to shoot on the Outer Banks. But as I was going along, I said, we know over the years, occasionally I've I photographed a dog or so on the beach. I thought, I think that's going to be my thing. I'm going to photograph dogs on the beach. So I did, and I did a book in 2011, and then last year I did another book of dogs uh, on the Outer Banks. So it got me to thinking, uh, as you know, I've kind of backed off from Ohio Ram quite a bit because of some personal issues, but, and, and you know, you got to have something, <laughs> and I so I said, you know, there. I go over here to the park, and they're just wall-to-wall -wall dogs. So I've started a new book here of, of dogs here around our particular neighborhood, and my goal is to get at least a hundred dogs this year. I've got I don't know about twenty-five so far. I only got started really in April, the latter part of April. So um, uh, I, I, that's been my my latest thing. But well, that sounds like fun. Did you did you say you published a book or? I got uh, I used two books. I used the blurb service that uh, is available. You know, it's just private publishing, actually. And I don't, you know, I give the files away to people. I, I don't. It's not a money making deal to me. And the books, if people want a book with their dog in it, it's whatever the company charges for the book. You know, I don't put any oh. profit margin in at all. But. Um, I handed out cards down in North Carolina, and uh, you know, with my web address on and what have you. And actually, I quite surprised that several people bought books. Apparently, one person must have bought a whole bunch of them with had their just one page with their dog in it. So, oh, that's uh, awesome! Yeah, I, I really enjoy it. And um, uh, well, while we're on the subject, if anybody is interested, you go to my website there, www.crider.us, K-R-E-I-D-E-R. -E -E uh, there's links to what I'm doing now. I got a blog I'm working on now, and then links to the two books I've done. But I, I've really enjoyed that, and I've really enjoyed talking to you, John. Hey, it's been great, Luke. Yeah, I hope uh, maybe if I'm lucky, uh, I'll catch you coming through Ohio. Yeah, keep, keep an eye on us. I didn't. I, I will. I didn't really look at the schedule as far as when we're due here, um, but you know, it's not going to be too much off of what it was last year. So yeah, and uh, if anybody sees this and wants to know when the sea ridge, it about uh, if you go to the website OhioRamShow.org, about three shows back, it's in the archive there. Um, You'll see. I did a show uh, in which it was primarily me, just telling you how to negotiate that website and find out when racers are likely to arrive in your area. And here's the website while I'm at it. It's raceacrossamerica.org, and uh, the race starts on the 11th of June. You can figure about two weeks for it to get finished. And if you'd like to see the race, you go there. Go look at that uh, show I did two or three weeks ago, 
and you'll see uh, some definition about how to follow. It's just not immediately obvious how you do that, and I tried to do, be a little helpful there regarding that. So, uh, John, I thank you a lot. Uh, if you'll hang around here for just a little bit, uh, when we get off the air, I'll chat with you a moment. Okay, Rick. I just wanted to uh, say a word here at the end of the show. Uh, I'm not real sure what to do with this thing I've started here, the Ohio Ram Show. Uh, it's been fun for me to do it. Uh, I'll not, I don't have anything more scheduled between now and the race time because I, d I had two or three people, a couple of teams that were interested. But the problem is everybody's headed for Oceanside. I'm sure Ron, uh, John's going to be headed out before too long. They're busy, and I thought, well, I'm not going to try to bother people anymore. They've got plenty of things to think about, plenty of things to do. I might try to do some recorded shows at the time stations here. I did that last year. In fact, a very popular show turned out to be, it's on, it's on the uh, uh, blog, but a very popular show turned out to be the one I did with the two veterans groups, the British and Americans, uh, when they came to Oxford. And I can't do anything live there because, A, I don't have the bandwidth available, and, B, uh, the, it's just too noisy. So, But I, could, I can do recordings there and put them up later. I may do that. What happens with the show? I don't know. I, I've just been, it's been enjoyable to do it. Uh, I may do something after the race. We'll see. I kind of got started late this year because Google has kind of fooling around with this whole service, and we finally... They finally settled down to make something that we could really use. So that's uh, the story from here. It's been good having you with you, John. And with that, we're going to say goodbye for now. And, John, just hang around a bit, and we'll chat with you. <laughs>